Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now yesterday some pretty massive news came in from NVIDIA. They unexpectedly announced the world's most powerful PC GPU ever created. At the 2017 Neural Information Processing Systems Conference, company CEO and founder Jensen Wong took the stage to show off the card which is based on the company's Volta architecture. NVIDIA actually first announced Volta-based products seven months ago now. The Tesla V100 Accelerator, a PCI Express Accelerator card for data centers. The Titan V on the other hand is designed to be used in PCs. And while it probably costs more than your PC, I know it costs more than mine, the GV100 powered Titan V, which is fabricated on the new TSMC 12 nanometer FFN manufacturing process. Uh, the FF stands for FinFET, but what's the N all about, you ask? Well, the N simply stands for NVIDIA, so FinFET NVIDIA. NVIDIA now has their own node over at TSMC, and that has allowed them to create this truly massive GPU, but more on that in a moment. The Titan V is available today at the bargain basement price of $3,000 US. It features 110 teraflops of raw performance, 21.1 billion transistors, 12 gigabytes of HBM2 memory, 5,120 CUDA cores, and 640 tensor cores. NVIDIA says it has nine times the horsepower of its predecessor, the Pascal-based Titan XP, or at least it does when talking about compute horsepower. Now this is still a consumer grade desktop GPU, believe it or not. That said, the Titan series has always been a prosumer type product selling for around or just over a thousand dollars US. There have been a few exceptions to that, but anyway, the Titan V pretty much kills that. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised though if we do see sort of a cut down type Titan release next year. Maybe the, the Titan VP without the tensor cores, for example. Eh. That was meant to be a bit of a joke, but anyway, uh, moving on, the Titan V is targeted towards researchers, developers, and scientists working in the field of AI and machine learning, much like the Tesla V100 announced back in May. No gaming performance information has been revealed, though Nvidia did say that the GPU uses the standard GeForce driver stack. In fact, just a few days ago, Nvidia released the 388.59 driver, bringing official Titan V support. With no less than 5,120 CUDA cores clocked no lower than 1.2 GHz, in fact the rated boost frequency is 1,455 MHz, and it's not much slower than that of the Titan XP, uh, just 8% lower in fact. So there's really no question the Titan V is the world's fastest and most powerful graphics card, even for games, or probably even for games. <laughs> The key thing to note here is that the double precision is at half rate and that results in 6.9 teraflops and that makes it worlds faster than the Titan XP. Also when compared to the Titan XP, the new Titan V packs 33% more CUDA cores and 43% more than the GTX 1080 Ti. 5,120 CUDA cores is an incredible amount of CUDA cores, but I do wonder how efficiently they can all be utilized without async compute. Needless to say, if it were to be compared uh, on a clock for clock basis to say the GTX 1080 Ti, you'd likely not really see anywhere near a 43% jump in performance, at least in games. So keep that in mind if you've got mad money to drop on a Titan V graphics card for your gaming rig. In my opinion, you definitely shouldn't do that. Buying one of these cards for gaming just would be an epic waste of money. That said, although the Titan V isn't a gaming graphics card, Nvidia are more than happy to sell it to gamers with deep pockets. And you just know some of these will end up in gaming rigs around the world. Loads of you have been asking me if I'll be getting a Titan V to benchmark on the channel. Uh, the answer sadly though is no. Nvidia says they aren't sampling this product and I can't say I'm all that surprised. Still, you'll likely see benchmarks pop up online in the not too distant future. I personally can't afford to buy one for testing, but I know there are media outlets that can and probably will. That said, if you happen to buy one and you want it compared to every current generation GPU and over 30 games at three resolutions, I'm available. I'm here for you. Anyway, as I said, this isn't really a gaming graphics card. Rather, it's a workstation level AI compute card. And with the inclusion of those unique tensor cores, it offers a massive performance leap over the previous models. Uh, for those of you unaware, the tensor cores are NVIDIA's special deep learning AI cores, and the Titan V packs 640 of them, the same amount as the Tesla V100. It's actually quite shocking to see how similar the Titan V and Tesla V100 are in terms of specs and likely performance. The Tesla V100 is an insanely expensive bit of kit. In comparison, the Titan V is a bargain. 
As far as I can tell, the only real difference between the two is the memory configuration. The Titan V's memory buffer is 25% smaller at 12 gigabytes, and as a result, the memory bus width has been reduced by 25%, and this results in about 25% less bandwidth. 27% in fact, to be precise, due to a difference in clock speeds. The Titan V also lacks the NV Link functionality, and the L2 cache size has been reduced from 6 megabytes to 4.5 megabytes. Speaking of memory, I should note that like the Tesla V100, the Titan V also features HBM2 memory. You're just getting 12 gigabytes of it, not the 16 gigabytes found on the Tesla model. The HBM2 memory has been downclocked slightly to 1.7 gigahertz, which again, coupled with the reduced capacity, has limited the memory bandwidth to 653 gigabytes per second. Though, as I say that out loud, limited, might not have been the best word to use because that's still a massive figure. As for the card itself, well, it looks, uh, dare I say it, a bit tacky. Uh, the gold die cast aluminium body. Uh, yeah, really, NVIDIA? <laughs> it probably doesn't look that bad in the flesh, but yeah, it's still gold. I guess at least it'll go with my gold motherboard and gold case. Uh, anyway, it features a vapor chamber cooler with a copper heatsink and blower fan. Apart from the gold finish, which despite the asking price, isn't real gold. This is the same founders edition cooler you'll find on the Titan XP and GTX 1080 Ti, for example. This all makes sense since the card has been slapped with a 250 watt TDP, and it features the same 8 plus 6 pin PCIe power connecting configuration as the Pascal Titans and GTX 1080 Ti. On the reference PCB, you'll find 16 power phases, though it's unlikely we'll see any custom board partner Titan V models. So that's what we know about the Titan V for now, until some lucky, or I suppose broke, tech enthusiast gets their hands on one. We won't know exactly how fast it really is, but you can safely assume it is the world's fastest graphics card as advertised by Nvidia, and it will be brutally fast compared to anything we currently have. What this means for PC gamers next year is hard to say. Obviously, there are faster gaming graphics cards to come from Nvidia next year, and they will likely be a decent step up from what we currently have. The only question remains now is, will they be a decent step up in terms of price? Uh, with limited competition from AMD at the moment, and probably for the foreseeable as well, uh, chances are you will be paying a bit more for your high-end gaming graphics cards next year. Of course, we just don't know what to expect at the moment. I'm a little concerned with where things are headed, but ultimately we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Even if AMD do happen to fall further off the radar, Nvidia are still competing with themselves, and they do need to give GeForce 10 series owners a reason to upgrade. Sure, they can afford to drip feed us the next generation, a bit like what they did with Pascal, but that doesn't really change the fact that GTX 980 Ti owners were in no hurry to upgrade to the GTX 1080, and most will have probably waited for the GTX 1080 Ti or just decided to skip Pascal entirely. I know people carry on about the, well, as I just described it, the drip feeding of new current generation GPUs, but I honestly didn't have a problem with NVIDIA releasing the GTX 1080 first, then the 1070 a month later, and then the 1080 Ti, or was it something like nine months later? It's not like the 1070, for example, started at $500 US or even $600 US or something crazy like that anyway, and then was knocked down to the current $380 US MSRP for the AIB cards. That's been the price since day one, and it meant that you were getting performance that the previous Maxwell generation offered for something like $650 US. Wrapping things up, like all of you, I'm keen to see Nvidia's new gaming-focused graphics cards next year, as well as AMD's, though Navi is expected much later in the year. You can expect me to benchmark the hell out of them. I can't wait to do that. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time, guys.